Hi, I'm Nick Moffitt with Verisurf Software. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to calibrate the master 3D gauge scanner. Scanner calibration is performed through the RDS control panel, so RDS version 4.1 should already be installed on the computer. When using the scanner with the master 3D gauge, the arm must be connected to an AC outlet. The scanner won't run on battery power. If the scanner has never been calibrated, RDS prompts us to calibrate the scanner the first time it's connected to the master 3D gauge, or the first time the arm is powered on with the scanner attached. For this demonstration, I'll power up the arm and then connect an uncalibrated scanner. When I mount the scanner, RDS prompts us to run the calibration. I'll choose Yes, at which point RDS prompts for a calibration method. I'll select Sphere with Reference Probe since it's the default method. We could also choose the simple Sphere method, which skips the measurement of the calibration sphere using the reference probe, but for this demonstration we'll use the more complete procedure. If the default user status hasn't been updated from standard, RDS displays a prompt stating that only advanced users can perform probe calibrations. I'll choose OK and then select the User Status button. In the User Status dialog, I'll change the status to Advanced and then enter the password Advanced to confirm our new status. After I choose OK, we're ready to calibrate. The list on the left side of the program window displays the steps involved in the calibration process. I'll choose the Play All button to begin the calibration. If we want to repeat a step in the process, we simply highlight that step in the list and then choose the Play From button. In the Sphere Properties dialog, we're prompted to enter or confirm the diameter of the calibration sphere. This value can be found on the Certificate of Calibration. The serial number is marked on the calibration artifact and should be checked against the serial number on the certificate. When I choose OK, RDS marks the Check Sphere Properties step complete and prompts us to plug in the reference probe. This is the probe with the 15 mm steel sphere. When I replace the scanner with the reference probe, RDS recognizes the change and prompts us to measure nine locations around the calibration sphere. The sphere should be securely mounted approximately half the length of the arm in front of the base and should remain there throughout the calibration. The calibration graphics are used to illustrate the desired arm pose for each step. The nominal pose is shown in blue and the actual pose in green. We can use the mouse scroll wheel to rotate and zoom the display. It's not critical to achieve the exact orientation displayed on screen, but we want to get close. Continuing with the reference probe step, I'll measure four points around the equator, four points halfway to the pole, and I'll measure a single point at the pole. RDS increments the point counter following each measurement. After the last point is measured, RDS displays the results including the theoretical and measured sphere diameters and the min, max, and average deviations, all in millimeters. If we want to repeat the measurements, we can choose the back button. When we're satisfied with the results, we choose the finished button to continue the calibration. RDS marks the reference probe step complete and prompts us to plug in the scanner. Without moving the calibration sphere, I'll remove the reference probe and mount the scanner. After a moment, RDS displays a graphical prompt for the first measurement field. Prior to calibration, the scanner should be allowed to warm up for at least 5 minutes, by which time it reaches 90% accuracy. When the scanner is ready, the status light on the back of the housing changes from a blinking green to a solid green. For maximum accuracy, the scanner should be allowed to warm up for 15 minutes prior to use. Calibration is accomplished by measuring the calibration sphere with the arm in three orientations, referred to in the list as measurement fields 1, 2, and 3. In each field, we measure the sphere using three regions of the scanner's volume. These regions are referred to as boxes and are indicated by rectangles in the graphical display. Our goal is to scan the sphere with the red scan line placed in each of the three boxes. We raise or lower the scan line in the display by moving the scanner toward or away from the sphere, and we move the scan line left and right by moving the scanner left and right. 
The rangefinder turns blue when the scan line is in the upper box, and it turns green when the scan line is in the lower boxes. For measurement field 1, the scanner is aimed at the face of the sphere closest to the arm, with the arm in a roughly horizontal plane. I'll center the scan line in the top box and press the trigger to begin scanning. I'll then scan the sphere until the coverage reaches 33%. This takes only a moment. Next, I'll aim the scanner slightly to the right and then pull it away from the sphere to move the scan line to the lower right box. I'll then continue scanning until the coverage reaches 67%. Finally, I'll move the scan line to the lower left box and I'll continue scanning until the coverage reaches 100%. RDS then prompts us to stop scanning, so I'll press the trigger once again to stop. RDS then marks measurement field 1 complete. Next, we're prompted to scan measurement field 2. I'll aim the scanner at the face of the sphere roughly 90 degrees around the equator from the first field, with the arm roughly horizontal. I'll then center the scan line in the top box and press the trigger to begin scanning. I'll complete measurement field 2 by scanning the calibration sphere in the lower two boxes. When prompted to stop scanning, I'll press the trigger a second time. RDS then marks Measurement Field 2 complete. For Measurement Field 3, the scanner is pointed down at the top of the calibration sphere with the arm once again in a roughly horizontal plane. I'll place the scan line in the top box and press the trigger to begin scanning. I'll then complete Measurement Field 3 by scanning the sphere in the lower two boxes. As before, I press the trigger to finish measuring only when prompted to stop. RDS then marks Measurement Field 3 complete. Once we've finished scanning the three measurement fields, we're prompted to scan in free measurement mode. I'll aim the scanner at the sphere and press the trigger once to begin measuring. I'll then move the scanner around the sphere, making sure to avoid the poles. The scan data doesn't appear to lie on a spherical surface because the calibration is not yet complete. When the RDS prompt indicates the coverage is OK, I'll then choose the Next button to begin calculating the calibration. RDS opens a progress dialog that displays the residual error and percent improvement for each iteration in the best fit calculation. When the calculations are complete, RDS displays the residual error and prompts us to use the calibration results. If the residual error is acceptable, we choose Yes. RDS then displays a dialog that allows us to name the probe. I'll enter the Verisurf serial number and choose OK, and I'll choose Yes when prompted to update the specs. RDS then marks the calculation step complete. Once the specs have been updated, RDS runs the final step, which is a verification of the calibration. In this step, which is similar to the free measurement step, we scan the calibration sphere. I'll aim the scanner at the sphere, press the trigger to begin measuring, and scan as much of the surface as I can reach. Notice how this time the scan data forms a sphere because the calibration is being used. When I have sufficient coverage, I'll press the trigger a second time to stop measuring and then return the scanner to the home position. Finally, I'll choose Next to see how well the measurements match the sphere. RDS opens a result dialog that displays various statistics, including the difference between the theoretical and measured spheres. We want this value, which is displayed in millimeters, to be better than the accuracy of the scanner, which is 40 microns, or 0.04 millimeters. When the check is successfully completed, we choose Finished. RDS then marks the checking step complete, and we can close the program. The scanner is now calibrated and ready for use in surface inspection and reverse engineering. A final note, in our example we used a scanner that had not been calibrated, so RDS automatically prompted us to run the calibration when the scanner was attached. If we want to recalibrate a previously calibrated scanner, we run RDS control panel from the start menu, choose the probe tab, highlight the scanner, and then choose calibrate. After we select a calibration method, the calibration proceeds as we've just seen.